right, everyone, today we are gonna do a little bit of a Q&A all about dog walking because there's been a lot of Qs and not a lot of As, and I really wanna answer the questions that you guys have, especially because a lot of you, it seems, wanna start your own dog walking business, and it can be kind of overwhelming in the beginning, not knowing where to start or what to do, so I'm gonna help you out a little bit with that. Okay, so the first question is, how do you deal with all of the leashes? And this is something that I really had to learn through practice, I didn't have anyone help me at all with this, so I kind of had to fumble around for a little while uh, to figure it out. But what I end up doing is I use a leash that ties around my midsection and then I loop all of the other dog's leashes into that leash. That way they are attached to me. So if something happens with my hands, like I slip or a dog tries to get away, there's a squirrel, whatever it is, I know that they're not gonna get away and if they try to, they're gonna take me down with them. So it's just an extra safety precaution. I also find it's, it's a lot easier, it doesn't hurt your arms as much, especially when you're walking a whole bunch of dogs or bigger dogs. So I find that to be very, very helpful. Um, in the beginning, I did try putting them all on my hands and it got really tiring really fast, especially in the winter because it just got so darn cold and it was just brutal. There are some more heavy duty belts that you can get that I've seen some dog walkers have that have loops in them. Um, I don't think it's really necessary, but if this is something that you're gonna be doing long term, you might wanna invest in that. I'll try to find that too and link it below if I can. Um, it seems to work really well for them. I don't know, that's not what I use. Okay, next question, how do you control so many dogs? This is one of the questions that I get probably the most because it seems insane when you have six dogs that you have to control. Um, it's a lot easier actually than you would think because they kind of get into a pack mentality when they're all together. You know, there's always like one or two leader dogs and the other ones kind of just fall behind. So for the most part, it takes care of itself. Um, when I'm walking them all on leash though, especially when they're all hooked into me, um, there's always gonna be one dog who's like trailing behind and then there's gonna be one who's just blazing ahead and then one who's gotta pee on everything and then there's always gonna be one who's trying to eat all the food off the sidewalk. So it helps a lot to have regular clients to know exactly which dog is gonna be which so that you know going into it which one you're gonna have to, you know, hold onto the leash a little bit more. Um, I like to keep my hands free by having the leash, um, the, the leashes all attached to me, but that does leave two hands for if I do need to pull a dog closer to me as we're turning corners or whatever it may be. So really knowing your dogs is gonna help a lot in terms of when you're in an off-leash park. Um, I never ever go into a park that is not fenced in. That's just for safety's sake. I have seen and heard of things happening to people that are just absolutely terrible of a dog getting away. So I only go in places where they cannot possibly escape. For the most part, everything is fine in the dog park. We all like to stick together. I go for little walks and I make sure I always know where all of the dogs are. So if I have to get them away from a situation or anything like that, then we're good to go. So just keep an eye on all your dogs and it pretty well takes care of itself. Next question, do you find it difficult to find all of the clients' houses? I did in the beginning. I found it very, very difficult. Um, I live in Toronto, it's a very big city and when I first started dog walking, I didn't really know where anything was. So I spent a lot of time on Google Maps on my phone um, now I pretty much know all the little nooks and crannies in the city. I know how to get everywhere So it's a lot easier now. It's a lot smoother But what I would do in the beginning apart from having Google Maps if I got lost is in the morning I would plan my route and that way you can just Know where you're going so that you don't have to spend all this time getting lost and in traffic and, and everything like that Because you want to spend as much time as you can with the dogs obviously now for the most asked question of all time is how much do I make dog walking? So how much do I charge? Uh, this is gonna be a little bit different depending on where you live. I live in Toronto, so the rates are pretty high actually because it's in the city. So it is, my standard is for a one hour group dog walk where I can take up to six dogs, I charge $20 per dog. And then if someone has two dogs um, in the household, then I will give half price for the second dog. Um, that is the standard in this city. It might be different depending on where you are. And keep in mind that this is Canadian dollars because I am in Canada. 
Um, I do other services as well, so sometimes uh, someone will need like a half hour private walk, and for that I'll charge $17. So we're out for the entire time. This is not like including pickups and drop offs. So I usually, if I'm doing a one hour dog walk, it ends up being two hours because of all the pickups and drop offs as well. Um, but that's a one hour chunk of time that is spent exercising me with the dog. So I also will sometimes do like a dog let out. So if there's an older dog, they can't necessarily, you know, they can't necessarily go into the park for a full hour. I'll spend, uh, sometimes I'll do an hour for that one or I'll do a half hour, but I'll charge the same amount because it is still taking up a big part of my day, a big chunk of time. That's how much I charge. And then usually in a day I find that I can get in two group walks and then I can do like one or two privates in the day. Um, so yeah, that's how much I charge, that's how much I make with the dogs. Oh, another thing that I didn't mention, so with dog sitting, um, I charge for, uh, no, how much do I charge now? I charge $40 per night for that. Um, and that's, they usually will come on the dog walks with me as well, so that includes like a million walks, honestly. They come with me for most of the day, so $40 for the dog sitting, and yeah. The last question that I'm gonna be answering today is what kind of training or schooling do you need in order to be a dog walker? Honestly, there's not a lot, I mean there is no schooling for dog walking, but there is some training. What I did in the beginning, because I didn't have much experience apart from owning a dog, so I started by working for a dog walking company and they did about three weeks of just training before I even got my own groups or was going out walking dogs. So that was really, really beneficial because there's a lot of sides of dog walking that you kind of don't really think about, like going into people's houses and things like that. So um, I found that training to be so, so valuable. So I definitely recommend, even if you just do it for a summer, just going with the company just to kind of learn the ropes, see how it's done, and then just work from there. Um, but otherwise, a lot of the training that you get, it happens from you just doing it. Like you learn a lot from just being thrown in the pool uh, and just making it work. Obviously, you have to know a lot about dogs and dog behavior and all of the different body language and all the different signs that the dogs have. So make sure that you know that before you just go out and take people's dogs. Just learn as much as you can so that you're not just going into it blind uh, because it can be really stressful if you don't know what to expect. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that this Q&A was helpful for you, that I answered some of your questions that you have about starting a dog walking business. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I make a lot of videos about dogs and dog walking and my dog and dogs that stay with me and just, just life in general. So if you're into any of that stuff, then you can just join us, hit that subscribe button and become a part of this community. And I will see you in the next video.